So this is the Little Marlow Sewage Treatment Works. I'm here to ask a few questions. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, sure. So Andrew Scott, I'm Head of Wastewater Treatment for Thames Valley Region for Thames Water. Amazing. Um, thank you so much for having us here today, for your transparency, showing us around, um, for letting us know how this place works. You know, it's obviously a very big enterprise and we really appreciate that. Um, as you know, I've been doing some testing yeah. on the Thames. Um, when I was testing, about 24 hours after the last outage, um, there were other people in, in high-vis uh, vests doing the same testing in the same place. Were, were they with you guys? Yes, they probably would have been, yes, um, from a subcontractor that we use uh, where any time that we have a spill into the river uh, or we are just monitoring um, the, the river health, we'll send people down to, to do tests, not bacterial tests like you, but water quality tests against our consent. And so what sort of things would you be finding after a significant outage like the, like the 16 hours, like the 12 hours that we've had this year? So that, so that wasn't an outage per se, that was actually storming that we had um, and during the time, just before you were out there testing, uh, we'd actually uh, put storm water out uh, as a consequence of heavy rainfall for 12 and a half hours prior to that. Um, we wouldn't normally test at that stage but actually at the same time uh, there, there were some issues on site that we, we were dealing with so we just did that as a, a just in case almost uh, on the back end there. But you would acknowledge that there is there is sewage in that. There's sewage from this going into the Thames and going into the, the nature reserve as well. So we've got no evidence that any any sewage went into the nature reserve at all. Um, in terms of what's gone into the into the into the river, we've got a combination of treated fine effluent, uh, which is compliant. We also would have had some storm water going in, um, and that storm water uh, is partially treated, um, so it would have been very dilute, um, and it would have been settled. Um, and it would have been screened, um, but that has gone into the river and it hasn't been biologically treated. So you've seen my results, what's yeah. your comment on that? Uh, I, I haven't seen your full set of results, but, but I've, 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 se I've seen some of your, your media pieces on it. Um, in some ways, um, I'm not surprised because it was after a big storming event, so 12, 12 hours of storming, uh, we, we, we wouldn't, ex sorry, we, we would expect um, there to be high levels of bacteria as part of that storm water. Okay, so you, you said you, you don't accept that sewage has gone into the nature reserve because I can tell you from, from the dog walkers, from the anglers, from the people walking past that there has been literally sewage flowing out the gates of here and into the nature reserve. Not, not as far as I'm aware. Um, the Environment Agency were called straight out. Um, I think they were called by, well they were certainly informed by us, that they were called out by members of the public, they've investigated fully, they couldn't find any evidence that any of our spilling off-site um, as a consequence of our power outage that we had um, actually We, we literally course. have film of sewage flowing out the gates of here and into the nature reserve. I, th I think it did go out of the gates. If, if it did go into the nature reserve then then clearly that's that's something that we're very sorry about and you know but I haven't had seen any evidence of that. Okay so uh, my results we've got levels of gut bacteria that are tens of thousands of times what you would expect which are directly linking the results that i had to the sewage outages would, would you acknowledge that yes that's, that's right because raw sewage does contain high levels of gut bacteria yeah. so. and, and so we also have very high levels of e coli of norovirus of enterovirus yeah. um, and levels of as little as 10 gene counts per liter would be enough to make someone sick We've measured as high as 40,000 gene counts per litre in the water after the outage. D does that surprise you? After storm flows? Um, po possibly not, no. So my question to you would be, you know that's happened, you know it's in the river, why haven't you told anyone? Because it's part, it's part of a normal operations of sewage works and are part of a st our storm permit. So under those extreme conditions, um, we we naturally would storm just because simply because there isn't enough capacity either in our networks or in our sewage treatment works. But that's not what I'm asking. What, what I'm saying is you know that there are residents down here, you know there are people that use the river. You yourself were talking about the fact that school children come here to do Mayflower fly counts on this river and you know that it could make them sick. So why aren't you telling anyone? We, we, what, what we have got is we've got our sewer map that, uh, that is available online at the moment, 
where anybody can log on to it and they can see where when we've spilled. And as you're aware, on this site, we've only actually spilt three times in the last 12 months. One of which was 16 and a half hours. That's right. But so I, as a local resident, would have to log on daily before I go for a dog walk with a dog to, to yeah. find out if you've done an outage? So that's how it currently works, yes. Does that seem right to you? No. So what can you think of that could be done to, to do something about this? Well, what, what I'd like to see is some sort of um, texting system or some sort of communication system that says that when we have discharged to the, to the environment um, through storming, that we can actually alert local river users. Um, I, I would need to work out whether that's technically possible and that wouldn't be, you know, that would be our uh, technology departments and uh, IT and OT. So you yourself have shared that you're, you're from an environmental management background and you surely must acknowledge that during these outages what you're doing is, is poisoning this river. How does that make you feel? Yeah, dreadful. Yeah, it, it's not something that I'd want to do. That, that is how the system's designed. Um, you know, we are operating it to design. So this is, this is a water company-wide issue. And you also shared that your, your wife is a wild swimmer. How would you feel about her swimming in the river here right now? Well, it's not bathing water season at the moment. There's so. plenty of people that wild swim all the way through this, the, the spring. <laughs> no, of course. No, I'd be very worried, yeah. So uh, the next question has to be, what's going to be done? Well, I, I think I think things like this get, get getting a bit of um, you know it's it's the campaign groups it's the, it's it's going back through to Defra, it's it's off what listening to what we have to do, um, and it's you know potentially going to be huge investment. But also, what we need to do is we need to stop infiltration getting into the network, um, which is not just a water company issue. This is something that um, local landowners, uh, local authority highways agencies you know all have a part to play and the public as well so, so if, if I can if we can prevent any of that getting into the sewer then when it does rain and when we do when we do have um, uh, uh, high groundwater levels um, and a mixture of sewage and rainwater coming through um, if we just had the sewage then we'd be more capable of dealing with it we'd have less spillages so we'd reduce the risk of storm spills this area that we're in now um, is going to see expansions. There's going to be more people here. There's talk of the film studios here. There's going to be significantly more pressure on this plant that is already outing into the river when there is, you know, like you said, big storms. What's the plan for the future? Uh, I need to go back and ask our modelling team um, and our future investment team what, what that looked like. Um, and obviously that is going to depend, in, in terms of investment, depend on... Um, the output of our draft plan to off what um, and how much money we're actually allowed to reinvest uh, into the business in the next five years. But, uh, but clearly there is a lot of growth in this area um, and you know, f for resilience purposes uh, we could do with some more capacity at some point. Yeah. Is the river safe right now? You'd have to ask the Environment Agency that I'm afraid. But you're, you're the company that put the sewage in there. Surely that has to be your responsibility at some stage. I'm not saying we're not partially responsible for that, but we're not responsible for letting the public know whether they can swim in the rivers or not. That, that's up to them. It's, it's up to us, despite the fact that you know that there are unsafe levels of contaminants in that river right now. There would be unsafe levels of contaminants from our normal discharge, let alone our storm discharge. So, because we don't remove bacteria, or we don't remove some bacteria and pathogens from our normal treatment process. There is no disinfection. We, we're, we're not, um, the, the, the Thames at this point isn't a, considered a bathing water, uh, therefore our effluent is not safe. So our effluent is not safe to swim in, and that's not for us to tell you what to do or not to do. But it, it, surely you f forget being part of Thames water. Yes as someone who is interested in the environment, as someone who has a wife who is a wild swimmer, would want all of us to know that, because nobody's ever told me that, and I, I, I do this for a living. I, 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 I think that, that, that's why we've got bathing water timescales, actually, so that you'll prevent, you're not swimming during um, high risk of storming. 
Well, I'm I'm telling you, as a local resident who swims, who is, you know, on top of this stuff all the time, who has done my own testing, nobody has ever said that before. And that information is not in the public eye. And it should be, because thousands of people use this river all the time. And that is only increasing and has been doing since the pandemic. And people are going to get sick if you don't let them know what you've just told me. Right, OK, yeah. I'm not sure what, what to say about that. I mean, sure, surely that has to... I mean, just just forget about the whole Thames Water thing. Just, you know, it, it person does, it, to person. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't feel right that this has... This, is, this, is the, this isn't a new thing. This has happened for the last 50, 60 years. Um, yeah, it, we, we operate to our permits and... You know, this site is a compliant site, so so as, as far as the company is concerned, you know, it, it's doing what it should be doing, and we're operating as it should be doing. You have to understand that to me, that just sounds like shit happens. It would take a lot of him. Look, I, I, I have this conversation off, offline with you, and I, I would really like to be able to uh, all, all the sewage treatment plant I look after um, to. To, to enable um, amenity and river users to, to be able to use their rivers in, in the right way, but it's going to be a long, slow process to get there, and a lot of investment. But, but it, you know, ultimately, it's it's the right thing to do. Well, listen, I really appreciate you us having us here today. So I'm just back from my visit to the treatment works. They were very thorough. We were looking around for about three hours. Just after I stopped recording, another local resident asked Andrew. Um, if he thought we should be swimming in the Thames at all and he responded well you wouldn't swim in a sewer would you and that is heartbreaking you know I have spent the last few years teaching my kids to swim right here encouraging other people to do just the same and one of the heads of the company that is literally called Thames Water that in one of their PRs uh, recently PR statements said that they are custodians of the River Thames kind of tacitly agreeing that it is okay to use it like a sewer um in some ways even though they were really open it was way way worse than i was expecting um i'm feeling very disheartened and really uh lacking any kind of way to go other than that uh, we now have a petition up and running um, so we need 100,000 signatures and we will get it discussed in the House of Commons and you know we'll see where that goes next so please do put any comments uh, down below any other suggestions you might have um, and I'll do my best to get back to them and it's all the very best from me Stevie B